Well, how's everybody doing this afternoon? We're back in here working on this 48. And we're getting to the end of the metal work on this car now, finally. Got axle rod out here helping me. And we started messing with this trunk lid and found this big surprise. This is a big nasty patch where they tried to shave off the uh, trunk lid latch. And as you can see, Axel done drilled one out there. They pop riveted it. You well, know, I mean, yeah, there's, they had a lot of Bondo to build this up where they left this slip. You can see it. That needs to be flush in there. So we're gonna drill this piece here out, cut one, weld it in the right way. That way it's, you know, less labor inducive when we start the Bondo work on it. We'll let him drill those out right there. And we'll pull that piece out and see what it looks like. So I've got, I've really got this piece left. I got two pieces in the floor pan that I'd like to change. Because like I said before, we want the car to be solid, you know, through and through. Um, this stuff like this don't, you know, typically cut it especially if you're trying to paint it or do bondo work it causes more trouble and it would be just to drill it out of there put a new piece in hope to finish the metal work on this car if we can there that's the big goal here this weekend is try to get the metal done so we can push this thing out sand the whole car down and start painting inside the door jams. So I left off last time. I still had to pull the door glass. Well, I did that. I wish I'd have got it on film, but it just kind of happens for the moment. And I got it. I pulled all the glasses. It's not a big deal. I'll go over it with you in just a minute. How that glass comes out of those doors. But one thing we did find when we done that was we're missing a bunch of parts in that driver's door for the glass. Got the regulator though. Well, he's getting her out of there, ain't he? I cleaned that up with a grinder a little bit, too, around there to see what we were working with. It looks like we got good metal to weld to, so this shouldn't be that big of a deal. And it's a relatively flat piece of me, like a two-dimensional curve. Oh, yeah, look at that. And now you can see why they done that. I figured, I'm I'm actually surprised at this because I, I thought that all this would be eat out with rot. But it looks like they just put that on there to quickly cover these holes right here. Well, we'll weld these holes up. That won't be a big deal at all. We won't even have to put a piece in there. So that's really good. We'll get you a good picture of it here. And what these holes are for... Your trunk lid latch would have went right here. And probably your locking mechanism or something here, I'm not sure. Of course, these cars had a great big latch on them. And you can see how big this area right here is. So, we're, we're not going to do anything with this. I guess this is galvanized tin. Tunnely thin. We'll cut some pieces here and then we'll just spot weld all these holes up. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be terrible at all. May even just go in behind this, since we're going to have to fill this area anyway, and back these up and weld them in, and then just sand it off. I think that that right there would probably be sufficient. The only thing that does concern me about that though right there is right here. How this piece right here is shaped in the, the trunk lid. And you can see how it dishes. I might have to cut a circle out, an egg shape, lay down in that and weld it up. But pleasantly surprised with that. Now back to the glass. So you can see right here my my track is out. <clears throat> you have to take the track out before you can ever get this glass out. And to take that track out, you have two screws here. You have a screw, the hidden screws right 
if in this cavity, I don't know if you can see it, but there's one Phillips head screw there. Then you come down here, you have to take this screw right here out, and then the adjustment comes through here, and you take it off, your track comes loose, you've got a couple of bolts down there for the, the glass, the track that the glass is glued in. There's a couple of bolts on each side. Take those two out, and then start feeding the glass all the way down the bottom of the door, and then just work that track back and forth. It'll kind of cock over this way, pull out, and then the glass will come out. So it's not, not that big of a deal. So we got all of the glass out, and I didn't find any surprises in these doors other than just the driver's door being missing uh, about two or three key parts but you know that is what it is right got the dash patched in last time so that's all ready and it's uh you know solid again we got door bottoms in and all that so like i said now it's just uh basically getting that that trunk lid welded up and once we do that then yeah get that trunk lid and a couple of spots in that floor pan over there and we'll be ready to sand the whole car down and actually put the body filler we've got to put body filler on both doors and on the trunk lid that's about it and shoot it well, i mean this is not going to be a ten thousand dollar paint job mind you we <laughs> We're trying to stay at that $500 budget. We're at, yeah, I think we're at $300, $350 right now. $350 what I've spent on it. I had to buy that master cylinder instead of brake shoes. That set us back instead of spark plugs. And then I bought the paint. And I'll show receipts. I've got receipts on that stuff. So, But that's where we're at. And that's where we're going. And we're going to start plugging these holes up. So here we go. Well, we moved to... Uh... Saturday morning now as uh, we finished up last night we got that little cap right there pop rivets drilled out and got it off and we discovered that the trunk lid was not eat out with rust and as you see there you know it's a basic holes for your That's the basic holes that would have been there, you know, for your original uh, trunk lock. Now, I don't have a trunk lock, but, you know, like I said last night, we finished up with that. Uh, it got that far, and I said, hey, let's let's call it a night, go in, let's get, get some food, and take it easy. And as I sat there, I remembered a while back on one of my junkyard excursions, I cut a trunk lid latch out of one but not it wasn't it wasn't a fleet master i think it was a dodge i'm pretty sure that this is a dodge trunk lid handle but i went and got it out this morning looking at it and here it is you can see there wasn't much left of that old car so i just cut the panel you know out around the rest of that trunk lid and here is the latch now it's not a direct fit by no means. It has a light in the top. But this is what I'm thinking. It's close enough to work. So if we put a plate in behind here and center this thing up, she will sit on there and mount pretty good. And then I could put my license plate bracket up here. I like this ideal because as you know I've said before I'm not really a fan of cutting these old cars up or anything like that and I know I welded up the rear door handles but I mean that's just a hole you can drill out and put those handles back on if somebody buys a car I trade it but I like that ideal right there better than just you know basically welding up the whole trunk lid right there either a you could cut it out weld in a patch b 
you could just weld up the holes kind of like I did with the door handles you know kind of like this you could do that but um, I really like the idea of putting that, that latch on there uh, so I think that's the way that I'm going to go with this right here so we're going to have to make us a panel to go in behind there and to bolt to we we'll have to make two of those. Basically just square piece of sheet metal, just some junk, you know, we can find and go from there. So let me go find a couple of pieces of sheet metal that'll sit in there. And we'll see if we can put that latch on right quick. And now of course I'm gonna have to weld too. There's a, a bunch of holes, all these little holes around in here. I'm going to have to weld all these little holes up, which shouldn't be a major issue. So that's where we're at. So let's, let's, uh, let me get a couple of pieces and see if we can put that latch on there right quick and call that, that right there done. Well, I was unsure about running the original emblem back on it but i think i'm going to i think i kind of like it the trunk lid latch will mount here we've got us a piece of uh, uh sheet metal to go inside this big hole with a hole in the center you know to tighten that latch up to and one down here now once we put that latch on this hole we have this hole as you can see very small this hole this hole and this hole and they have to be welded up now potentially most likely this hole and this little hole will have to be welded too but i've been I, you know i did run the grinder over this clean everything up so i could weld these on up and go ahead and mount that latch test mount it and up here we'll have to put a uh, license plate bracket of some sort which we'll probably have to make so that will most likely well i don't know i'll probably end up having to weld those small holes up and probably just have to make new ones for a license plate bracket most likely that's what's going to have to happen uh but that's okay i mean they're just small holes as you can see all those holes are small but I do kind of like the fact that, you know, I'm plugging most all of them up with something. Trunk lid, latch, emblem, you know, something of that nature. I assume that, well, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know how that original latch would have worked on there. If that hole up top was a locking mechanism for a lock tumbler, I don't know. But I do know that now it's going to be a spot where the license plate goes. And, and I just... The only thing that worries me or concerns me about that is the way it's going to look once you get all that gobbledygook on there. Is it going to be too busy? I don't know. It may look good. Of course, this is a rat rod, so, you know, it's whatever you like. And personally, I like not having to cut the car up, you know, or weld up, you know, a bunch of stuff on it. But if it is too busy, we could always pull the emblem off. I think it would look better with the latch and not the emblem. Plug up those small emblem holes and let it ride there. But let's mock it all up, come back, take a look, see what it looks like, and then go from there. All right, I got all them holes welded up now and ground off. And as you can see, they, they, uh, they welded up really good. I welded up a couple extra holes there, so I'm going to mock this thing up now and we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like on there. Of course, there's still a lot to unpack on that trunk lid around that spot because all that bondo is going to be fixed. But, you know, that is what it is. Not terrible, but, you know, here we are. Let me go ahead and mock it up and let's take a look at that latch on there. I went ahead, the handle was broke on that latch and it just rusted. So I welded it straight down. I mean, 
just need it to grab on, pick up the trunk lid anyway. So I don't think it will hurt anything. Of course, the latch is 80 years old, so, you know. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and put that on there and let's take a look at it. See what we got and see what she looks like. All right, I've got this mocked up. This is one configuration right here. License plate off to the side. Moving the emblem up. See, the emblem originally mounts here moving the emblem up and then making us a small bracket right here off the bumper <clears throat> now that's one configuration that's the configuration i'm looking for because i think that it's too busy so if i take this right here and then put it back where it was originally right here and then we move the license plate Unfortunately, I don't have anywhere to, it's hard to mount the plate. Well, let me just get it there. Now you can kind of see. This is the second configuration. And I just, I think it's too busy. All right there. I just think that that's, that's way too busy. Of course the license plate you know would be kicked out like this but yeah if we go back to this route here where we mount the plate over off the corner of the bumper um that has its advantages too well now i can't get the plate fighting this plate there we go because if we take this right here and we'll pull it out Right here where we don't have a tumbler or whatever is supposed to go there, we could retain that hole and not mess with any of this and put our center hole for our emblem in right there and cover that whole thing. Get this comely straight and then drill two holes here. And then we would plug weld these four. Now, I like that ideal a lot because if you ever if somebody if i traded for the car or i sold it and somebody just had to have it back original or they wanted to do a full-on restoration i'm not damaging anything there they would still be able to use their trunk lid <clears throat> as it's supposed to be used and i like that uh just kind of doing it the way i want to do it without damaging the way that it was really done from the factory other than just plug welding a couple of holes that you can just take a drill bit and punch back in there so i'm going to have to run this over with amanda right quick and see what she says because i just don't know i really like that i like the way that looks it's not terribly busy i keep my emblem on there and my license plates out of the way that bracket will be a lot easier to make and i don't have to mess with trying to do anything with that hole right there for the jug for the little you know the lock-up mechanism so that's where we're going let me go confide in her and see what she says and then we'll come back and we'll do something either way but i'm really wanting to go that route so we'll see you know what she thinks yeah, I know the car is extremely close to the wagon because we we set the brakes up, bled them, and got them working, but they've not been adjusted, so they're a little tight. I need to back them off a little bit so we can roll this car easily by hand. We got to clean that carburetor too now, but that's not a big deal. A little at a time. We're almost finished for this thing. About ready for getting ready to paint. About ready to start getting ready to paint. All right. We got her in there now. After discussing it with Amanda, we decided to go with the license plate off to the side of the bumper. Well, she thought the same way I did, that it, it looked a little busy back here with all that. So, this is what we have now. <clears throat> we I moved that latch up. And you can see I welded in all these 
holes around through here that were there. So we moved it up to cover that hole, dropped straight down, and we've got our latch here. Now this has, this old latch, I'm pretty sure it's out of a Dodge. It has a light right here. I may try to I may try to get that working actually. That'd be kind of cool. And if you're wondering about my license plate, that thing's old and came off an old car I bought and re-registered. Actually, I've still got that car. <laughs> but yeah, here we go. Um, I mean, yeah, people are going to say, well, you know, people that know these cars or no Dodge, they're going to say, that's not the right trunk latch. But it's okay. I mean, it serves its purpose. It works. I can open the trunk lid. And I had to weld all that, cut all that out, and weld in new metal, or plug up all them holes, so somebody could fix it back the way they want to if they, you know, if I decide to sell it. You know that latch came out of a junkyard over here in East Tennessee. That the guy that owns the junkyard, it wasn't his; it was his dad's. His dad passed away. He took over the junkyard. And it's private you can't I had a hard time I had to know somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody to get me in there and that's where that latch came from I also have a whole windshield assembly for this car that come out of there too guy was really friendly once he got to know us took us back there let us you know walk around about a half a day and take a bunch of stuff I got parts for this wagon back here got parts for this got parts for several things and uh Really appreciate him letting us go in there and do that. That was nice. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. Now that the trunk lid is uh, set to go for body work. That leaves us with... I need to do a couple of little spots in the floor pan. They're just minute. I need to make that lid, you know, to cover the master cylinder. I probably won't film that because, I mean, it's basically like three pieces of square sheet metal it, it you know be kind of pointless so i'm going to knock those out and then it's on to sand them sand this thing down oh one other thing that i forgot we don't have i have a fulton visor for this car visor is very cool i love visors and you got one on cadillac uh i've got one for this car that i kept off of another car that i bought and sold so i don't have any brackets so brackets are extremely expensive we are on a budget so we are going to make brackets for that fulton visor and i will do a video on that show how i make those brackets i've got a design kind of in my head this won't be the first time i've made brackets for one of those visors but after doing the last one, I've got some better ideals for this one. I think could be real good. So I will do a video on that. So I'll be looking for that. But you guys go and have a great weekend. Um, be looking for upcoming show videos. The show season starting up again. Make sure that you go to our Facebook page, Long and Low Facebook page. Find us on Facebook. We post a lot of great pictures there of uh, all kinds of cars, hot rods, rat rods, street rods, lead sleds, bombshells, low riders. We put a lot of cool pictures on there. We also post all the shows we're going to be at, all the local shows that are around here. We try to post them on there. The Redneck Rumble schedules and stuff we try to post on there. A lot of great information on that Facebook page coming at you. Uh, make sure you hit that like button on that Facebook page and go ahead and friend us there and I also post the weekly videos on there uh, for people who may be scrolling through and catch us on Facebook and don't know we have a YouTube channel so yeah go hit us up on the Facebook like share subscribe the video keeps everything going we appreciate everybody's support you guys go out have a great weekend and we will catch you next time on this budget 48.